y'all, it's Shelly Mann with Strategic Sales Advisors. Thanks for joining me today. And today I wanna talk about some questions that you need to be asking yourself as we get into strategic growth. Now, if you watched the video from last time, we really talked about defining sort of the areas that you could concentrate on in your growth strategy, in talking about things like market penetration, product development, uh, market development, and diversification. Well, this week I want to talk about some questions you need to be asking yourselves as you uh, plan or as you build your strategic plan um, to hit those budget numbers that you want to hit in your next cycle. So the first question I think that we should ask ourselves is, do we have the internal resources needed? And when I'm talking about internal resources, I'm talking about things like time, I'm talking about things like people, and I'm talking about things like structure. Because as we're looking at growth, right, we're looking at the space where everything can get bigger, right? Everything's going to get to that next level. And if we don't have the internal resources to actually um, take care of that growth, then we're setting ourselves up for failure, right? If we have sales out there focused on selling more, uh, whether that's a product or a service that your company um, does, right? Uh, but we don't have the internal resources to back that up, that's our first red flag that maybe we need to pause and reassess what we're doing, right? So we need to take a look at, do we have the time in, uh, in our company or organization to do things like diversify or to come up with a new product or to tackle a new market, okay? Um, do we have the people uh, that can handle one of the biggest spaces that I see companies fail in is in um, customer satisfaction or in customer service. Uh, sales gets out there, they sell, whether your um, company does product or service. And then once that sale has happened and operations takes over, we need to still have that customer service aspect in there or have the capability from a people standpoint to have enough um, people around or enough people to take care of the customer so that we're not focused on consistently just sell, 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 but we can't take care of what we've sold, okay? And then the structure, uh, especially in the manufacturing space, right? So if you are selling into the manufacturing space and uh, you are ramping up your sales, do you have the capability for um, that manufacturing to happen? Do you have the capability for um, you know, storage of your product so until it gets to that sale or until it can get shipped out. Um, even space or structure, that type of thing, when you're talking about a company that's service-based, if you're going to be adding more people, do you have a place for them to sit? Is your company virtual? How are you, you know, tying all of that in? So again, first question, do we have the internal resources needed? The second one is, do we have the cash flow? Uh, and this is really important because as we grow our business, we need cash to be able to infuse in to, to, to help that growth happen, whether that's through additional spend in marketing as you do market penetration. If you're product launching, you're gonna need a marketing budget to help on that. Uh, there's a lot of front facing cash that you are going to need as you grow your business. We all know this. If you have launched your company uh, and you have worked through that, you know that you need a lot of upfront cash in order for a business to thrive and flourish. So we need to be asking ourselves, and if we don't, again, if we don't have the financial resources or can't get the financial resources, then we need to put that red flag up and say we need to pause and we need to figure out what we're going to do. Third question, do we have the supply chain uh, support needed? And this one came up a lot through COVID. This one came up a lot post COVID, right? When uh, we wanted to sell more, but we didn't have the capability because we either couldn't manufacture more because the supply chain was broken, right? Or I even look at it from the perspective of um, supply chain being people. You see the struggle in a lot of businesses nowadays where when we when businesses ramped back up out of COVID uh, and people were out there actively hiring, there's a lot of industries that couldn't get people in so they couldn't physically sell more. Think about the restaurant industry, right? They want to sell more, they want to get more people in. But if they don't have the staffing, if they don't have the supply chain of getting the right staffing in place, then they can't, right? It's the same thing in manufacturing. I don't know about you, but uh, I made the smart decision right before COVID to uh, lift up and move completely across the country. Uh, and I, you know, for uh, business opportunities and growth in my business, bought a house, 
started renovating it and then the world shut down. And while I was able to renovate my house through the, through COVID, uh, I made a rookie mistake in that, in that I waited to purchase my uh, appliances for my kitchen until very late in the game, in the renovation. And while I could get the stove and the dishwasher in, I couldn't get the refrigerator in and I couldn't get the vent hood in. And if you know anything about trying to build a kitchen, things like backsplashes and those types of things can't go in until a vent hood shows up. You know, so we had to wait on that. And there's a cost to that, you know, in waiting. I have products, I have tiles sitting around, but the tiler can't come in and do tiling. Uh, and, and so you've just got people waiting. You've got contracts waiting. You've got things waiting until a product comes in. Uh, the refrigerator was an even bigger issue. It took me 15 months to get the refrigerator in that I had ordered, that I had paid for, simply because the supply chain was broken. And granted, it was being shipped in from overseas as well. So that was an even bigger situation. And the company that I was working with that was supplying the appliances was keeping me well up to date on things. But you know, at the end of the day, I had to wait around for quite a while. So again, supply chain is incredibly important as we ramp up and we try to figure out how we're gonna grow strategically. Do we have the people and the product supply chain in place? And if we don't, another red flag. The fourth question we wanna talk about is, do we have the right people in the right seats? And that is from executives all the way down to, you know, line line employees or line team members. Uh, because if we don't have the right people in the right seats, things are not going to get done that need to get done in a strategic way in order for you to grow. If you don't have, um, I, I don't know how familiar you are with a, a, a process called EOS, um, Entrepreneurial Operating System. I highly suggest that you take a look at it if you haven't. But if you don't have a visionary within your organization and also then an implementer, an integrator, that type of a person, the person who's going to get the day-to-day -day things done, then you're all ideas and no actions, right? And that goes down through all the different teams. Um, as you start to strategic plan, you need to be able to put a plan in place, have a vision, right? And then a plan tied to that vision. What does your company look like five to 10 years from now? And then now here's, let's build our strategy each year to get to that stage, to get to what that vision looks like. Um, and so you need all of those different people to be sitting in the right seats. You need a strong operational team that's going to get things done. And you most especially need a strong sales team that can get out there and, and sell. Um, you know, perfect example of this is, is I was talking and working with a client and um, while she felt that they had uh, the right people in the right seats, uh, what we uncovered is that one of the people that worked with her really didn't like to sell, didn't like making cold calls, didn't like doing that type of thing. Um, and really, at the end of the day, that is sales. You know, making those new connections, uh, talking to new people, that is sales. So you need to be able to do that. And if you can't, or if that is not something that attracts you, then we need to find a better seat for you. Um, another example, I uh, worked with a gentleman with his company, had a salesperson with him for five years, out of the gate, great salesperson, but after five years was feeling very burnt out and he didn't want to lose this person. So what did we do? Well, we moved that person into a customer success role, right? That, that energy of still connecting with the clients and the customers and having conversations, but not necessarily doing the day-to-day -day sales lift. And maybe that person gets moved back in when they've had time to sort of recharge and reinvigorate their uh, excitement about the sales process. Or maybe they don't. Maybe this is a new structure and maybe this is a, a new position for this person where they will flourish going forward but we do need to know that we have the right people in the right seats. The fifth question I wanna talk about is, uh, and that we need to be asking ourselves is, what is the economy doing? And again, we've all been looking at this recession or no recession, um, what's going on in the economy? Uh, you know, We went through high, high inflation, that has come down some. Um, we've had you know, low unemployment, post COVID coming out of that and positions opening up. Are they the right positions that are opening up? That's not me to say or ask. I guess I could ask it, but that's not for me to say. But is there a concern within your market segment, your business entity, or for you, um, where the economy is having a challenge? Um, again, 
great example on this is uh, when inflation went up significantly and, um, and you know, uh, mortgage rates and things like that, you know, the housing market knew it was going to take a dip. Housing companies or builders had to take a look at that and say, all right, if, um, the, if, if mortgage rates are going to double, uh, less people are going to be purchasing houses. And that means that we need to have a different strategy on how we're going to grow or how we're going to sell our product. Same thing if you look at it from um, the hospitality industry, the hotel space, right? Hotels are an expensive thing to purchase and to buy. And companies, institutional owners out there, are going to heavily be taking a look at what is the interest rate and does it make sense for me to buy a hotel right now um, at, with interest rates that they are? Am I going to be able to cash flow out of that? Am I actually gonna be able to make profit on that? in the time that I want to own that asset before I want to turn around and sell it? Is it going to grow enough, even in the sale, for me to make a profit out of that? So we need to understand what economic concerns there are out there. Um, again, it could be a situation of that a market uh, that would traditionally be open to you is no longer open because of things that are going on within the economy or even in the world as a whole. So again, if you ask that question and things come up, that's a stop, that's a pause, and we need to reassess. And finally, the last thing and probably the most important, I mean, all of these are important, but the most important in my opinion is, are our business units aligned? Is operations and sales, are they in sync with each other? Is there open lines of communication? Because again, as we are ramping up sales, forecasting is going to change um, and, you know, whether it's a product or service that you are selling out there, then operations needs to be able to understand how they're going to um, handle that uptick in business that they now have to actually ensure happens, right? They have to make sure that the product is going to get built and or, you know, um, put together, whatever, and that it's going to get out the door in the time that it needs to get out the door. Um, or if it's a service-oriented company that once that that project or that um, contract comes through, that the team is ready and has the capability of servicing it in the time that is needed. So if there's not open lines of communication, if you if you do not have your company within within this sync area, then this is another pause, and we need to reassess. Where do I see the biggest challenge and situation with this? Oftentimes, it's when um, a CEO is also running sales, but has maybe a chief operations person. And the CEO is trying to play dual roles, and sometimes things get lost in translation. So that's a consideration that you need to think about if you're the CEO, um, is if you're sitting in, in dual seats and you're managing you know, dual roles, is that affecting the way that the communication is happening? And is that putting a pause on your strategic growth? I hope these questions help you out. I hope some of this information uh, is helpful to you. If it is, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel uh, and, and we can continue the conversation in comments. If you have other things or other questions, I'd love for you to share those with me and the rest of the group. Uh, and thanks guys, and we'll talk next week.